I really think you need an umbrella! No! You know why I don't want one of your stupid umbrellas? Because I couldn't win! They'll come back later! And Frost, you'd better be here! Oh, they're gonna come back! <laughs> Christmas with the Cranks is a 2004 Christmas comedy starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Tim Allen. When their characters, Luther and Nora's daughter, Blair, joins the Peace Corps in Peru and won't be home for Christmas, they decide to skip Christmas and go on a 10-day Caribbean cruise. But when Blair decides to come home last minute, it causes an uproar. This movie is wild, unserious, unhinged, and ridiculous because there's no way I'm dealing with what they put up with. It would have been on and popping for Christmas. It wouldn't have been looking a lot like Christmas. It would have been looking more like 4th of July. Ain't no jingle bells. It's about to be pop, pop, pop. The neighbors need they ass whoops because why does it bother you so much that I'm not celebrating Christmas? Huh? What my business got to do with you? We're selling Christmas trees again this year. How much is the big one? 90. We're not buying a Christmas tree this year. We're going to go away on a cruise. We don't need a tree. All hell broke loose in the front yard when Luther didn't want to buy a Christmas tree from these two poor little boys. Talking about $90. $90? I let it go for about $40. $40? Even if I was celebrating Christmas, I'm not about to be buying no $90 tree. But Luther tells them we're not celebrating this year. We don't need a tree, but they're still pushing. Like, buy this tree. Why are you not buying this tree? It's for the Boy Scouts. We are, I don't care about no Boy Scout. I'm about to be out in the ocean on a cruise. What I need a tree for? So, yeah, buy and take that expensive for no reason tree with you. Whoever buys that tree is getting ripped off even more. Because all the tree branches is in my yard, on the curb, in the street, dragging it like that. So, because they don't want to buy a tree... It's a problem now. And they went to go snitch to, I guess, the block king. Those two boys and that grown man went to go snitch to their neighbor, this guy named Vic Frohmeyer. Luther Crank just stiffed the scouts on a Christmas tree. Then Frohmeyer and the rest of the block gonna try to intimidate them. Trying to intimidate Luther and Nora. And Luther and Nora was eating it up. Hiding behind their curtains like some punks. Spilling their guts to Frohmeyer. Oh, not Frohmeyer. I mean, he's like the unelected ward boss of the street. You should have just bought the tree. Why are you whispering, Luther? This is our house. I'm whispering for the same reason you're hiding behind that curtain. I'll be damned because we gonna see each other looking at each other. We see each other. We see each other. Because what you looking at? What you about to do? Because I don't want to buy a Christmas tree. Just what you think you gonna do to me. And the way Luther wasted all that money on this bald-headed tree... Once he found out his daughter was coming back home for Christmas, is lunatic behavior. Just one. How much is it? 75 bucks. It's 15 right there. Yeah, supply and demand. He bought that bald head tree for $75 and had the nerve to tie it on top of his car like it was a real treat. When all he had to do was throw it in the car. What was he securing? He takes it from on top of the car and then throws it on the ground. Now, I was laughing, but at the same time, I was thinking he got money to blow. Money to blow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Now, the block and that damn Frosty. The way the neighbors bullied them to put that Frosty up. But I gotta tell you, a lot of the neighbors are pretty upset. Oh. Everybody decorates, everybody bakes cookies, and swaps gifts. I'd appreciate if you and everyone else around here would just respect my wishes. Whatever you say, Luther. Weather should be clear tomorrow. Perfect time to put up Frosty. The disrespect was real. He just told him to respect my wishes. We're not celebrating Christmas this year. How many times I gotta say that? We're not participating in the block activities. And he said, whatever you say, Luther. So why was he so rude and handed him that Frosty paper. Like, put up Frosty. I don't care what you just said. The way I would have snatched that paper from him, balled it up, and threw it in his face. They had Nora hiding under the covers over that Frosty. If you don't get up, pull yourself together, girl. They're here. We're here for Frosty. They want Frosty. Well, they can't have him. The block pulled up to their house while Luther wasn't at home. He was at work talking about... We want Frosty. Men at that and they're delinquent kids. First of all, why are you not at work and Luther is? Shouldn't you be at work 
brokey while you're over there trying to intimidate a woman knowing her husband isn't home pulling up with your kids at that begging for a frosty that's not even yours that don't got nothing to do with you just leave frosty on the front porch we'll put him up for you they said they'll put him up for us absolutely not oh please luther no luther we'll come back later oh they're gonna come back what's the deal Girl, if you don't pull yourself together and get up, she had to sneak out the house to get away from them. And she couldn't sneak out the house in peace because all eyes was on her. I bet she was feeling like Tupac. And look at Frohmeyer. He would rather die and get ran over. Just look at him. Than Frosty not be put up on their house. Not his house. Their house. Nora? <laughs> Nora, stop the car. <gasps> don't do anything you'll regret. Give us frosty. We just want frosty. Every time I watch this movie, I need my inhaler. It's ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous. Why is she screaming like that? What is going on? <laughs> Why is he chasing and holding on to a car like that over a frosty, the snowman? Bro Meyer should be embarrassed. He should never want to step foot on that street again. Now, it's not just the neighbors. The people in the community need their ass whooped too. Luther talked Nora into getting a spray tan for the crews inside of the mall. And when they do, the priest is there. Father, what are you doing here at the mall? And sneaking a peek at that. I see you looking. You ain't slick. Eyes up here, father. I hear it from a good source that you and Luther decided not to observe Christmas this year. I don't care if you be in the church preaching or not. Me not celebrating Christmas is none of your business. Now, who talking about me to you? Huh? What are y'all looking at in the back? Why are you stopping looking at me in my bikini? You ain't never seen a bikini in some Speedos before. We're at the tanning place. We try to get a tan here. You act like we in church. Even if we were in church, they say, come as you are. I can't. <laughs> And the fact that they made the front page news in the newspaper because they're not celebrating Christmas. Who was being that petty? And they used the bikini and Speedo picture too in the paper. Who's out there wasting trees like that? So now since they found out Blair is coming home for Christmas, they ended up canceling their cruise like some fools. So because of that, they're like, we need a Christmas tree. So Luther went over his neighbor's house and asked for his tree. I can't seem to find a Christmas tree. Can I borrow yours? You go my tree. Yeah. And I can get it back in your house before you return. You break one ornament, we're both dead. And we'll leave it just like I found it. Since everybody in the neighborhood is so nosy and can't mind their business, Luther got the police called on him because they thought that he was in there stealing the other neighbor's tree. I'm watching the Trogdon's house. It appears as if Frank has lost his mind. He's stealing their Christmas tree. Now what that got to do with you? Binoculars? He not stealing your tree? So as Luther and the spiky haired kid is pushing the tree out the house, the police pulls up and puts Luther in the police car. But they let him go real quick because the spiky haired kid came and showed them the house keys that the neighbor gave to them. Told them they had permission to go in there and take that tree. They thought they had one. Now, this neighbor named Walt and Luther would always go back and forth. They can't stand each other. So, Walt had these Christmas carolers go over to Luther and Nora's house to go sing them some Christmas songs, knowing good and well they're not participating. I think some Christmas cheer would do them good. Really? Yeah, well, why don't you go ahead? What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh. I want to know what got into them that made them run and hide in their own house away from these Christmas carolers. They are so goofy. And then the neighbors start to join in. They are so petty. This The neighbors are some jerks. Why people at work always in your business? Luther's co-workers had the nerve to get an attitude when he was kind enough to type them out a letter saying he's not celebrating Christmas and that he wants no parts of it. He doesn't want any parts in the office activities, nothing. And now they mad. Just look at him. Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. Walmart called, said I had to buy my own cheap perfume since Santa Claus isn't coming this year. People be having the audacity. 
like this man right here. Well, you always select the most beautiful cards, Mrs. Crank, and you really should put your order in. We're not going to be ordering Christmas cards this year. When she told this man, I don't need any Christmas cards this year, he followed her into the restaurant. 911? 911. Mrs. Crank, we've got to talk about your Christmas invitations. We won't be needing those either. No Christmas Eve party? She's not ordering Christmas cards either. He's out of control. If it was me, I'm making a scene and I'm letting everybody know up in there that he's stalking me. I got a stalker now. I'm being harassed. Help her friends were full of it too because she said what she said. How do you simply not do Christmas? Wait, you're skipping. When do you leave? Christmas Day. Why don't you have a party anyway? Because we don't want to, Mary. I said what I said. Ain't no Christmas at my house. Find your own party to go to. You not turning up over here. Go turn up over there. It was funny when Nora thought she was about to get some on the kitchen table. When all she was about to get was talked into skipping Christmas and going on a cruise. <laughs> What's that? We skip Christmas. We skip Christmas. Now, Nora knows she's wrong for this. She knows she's wrong. She knows she did not need no white chocolate that bad. Or the pistachios. Got this man going outside in the pouring rain like that. Twice. They didn't bring the umbrella. Oh, I need that stuff from chips. And don't forget Dixon's white chocolate, one pound bar, and March Brothers pistachios. Okay. Talking about I need it. Well, now he needs some NyQuil. Some Theraflu. Some vitamin C. You didn't get the white chocolate. I didn't have it. The butcher. As odd as it sounds, I didn't think of asking the butcher where the chocolate was. I'm not too sure about those pistachios, but I'm pretty sure that chocolate is not intact. Now, this scene in the movie has to be my favorite. Excuse me, I am looking. But first, why are you walking up on me? Touching me like this. Don't do it. I am looking for a ham. A hickory honey ham. If there are any left, they'll be back there. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. The Mrs. Claus looking like back there eavesdropping, plotting, so she can go over there and steal this woman's ham. And I don't know who this lady is with this basket, but she ain't slick. Her and Mrs. Claus over there working together. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. If falling over that basket and running into that display didn't set me off, that sure would have. Yeah, I was looking for him, but now I want beef. But she sees someone at checkout with the ham that she wants, and she ends up paying a ridiculous amount of money for it. Enough money to put this couple's son in college. All for the bag to break, and the ham rolls out into the street and gets ran over by a big rig. I don't know what made Luther think he would be able to put up Frosty on his roof by himself. It's the common sense for me because where it's at, I don't see none. Where it go? The ambulance had to come and get him together real quick because he's a fool. And that's when the whole neighborhood finds out Blair is coming home for Christmas. So they all get together. The neighbors decide they're going to put this annual Christmas Eve party together for grown-ass Blair. Blair's coming home for Christmas. The plane arrives about 8 o'clock. We're about to have a party here at the Cranks. A Christmas homecoming for Blair. Everyone was acting like this grown woman was five years old. All they had to do was say, no, we're not having a Christmas Eve party this year. We didn't think you were coming home for Christmas. We're going on a cruise. Anybody got a turkey? We have two, both in the oven. Okay, beautiful, get them. Now, both of the turkeys... That's greedy. You telling me nobody else in the neighborhood got a turkey to bring? The police go to pick up Blair and her boyfriend Enrique at the airport, even though they were mad at the cranks for not buying one of their calendars. But they decided to still participate, and they did the most for Blair, too. They were stalling so that everyone back at the house could get ready for the party. They ended up bringing back a real criminal to the crank's house all for the spiky haired kid to let him go inside to the party too what are you doing you swore on your kids lives what kids the thief was in there having a good old time but he did get arrested at the party but blair finally shows up to the party that's really all for her and the party was whack where was the fun at because i didn't see none all that being stressed out wasting all this money on bald-headed trees a ham 
spray tans and botox for this party to be whack but as long as they was having fun that's all that matters huh the way they gaslighted this man the whole movie acting like they knew who he was why did when they had was childish because he's the one who actually came through with the ham all they had to say was who are you but i just can't get over how much they did for grown-ass blair why is nora trying to have luther hide his tan just say girl we were planning on going on a cruise but you said you was coming home last minute let her know how special she is because obviously she is they had the fire department come out all because the lights went out no fire department came out for me when my lights came out did they come out for y'all everyone was acting like blair was a local celebrity but it seems like a christmas movie is never complete without a touching moment and that's what we have right here between the block frenemies walt and luther blair is going to be staying with us for 10 days so we're not taking the cruise Nora and i would like you guys to have it does this mean we have to start being nice to each other of course not because i still don't like you that much old man I'm not that fond of you either but let me know would you still go through with this Christmas party? And would you tolerate your neighbors or anyone who tried you like that? Let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.